Hello, I'm Kimberly Wallston. Welcome to Insiders Health TV, where we bring you the freshest happenings in the world of medicine without that quack propaganda. Today we'll be talking about a new study that shows half of the meat and poultry sold in supermarkets may be tainted with staph. And we'll weigh in on the raging debate about chocolate milk in the school systems. There are many benefits to reducing the amount of meat you eat, including heart health and factors of obesity. For most of us, however, some right-sized portions seem like a healthy and natural way to get protein and other vitamins and minerals that are harder to find with legumes and other vegetables. Unfortunately, it turns out that half of the meat in the United States grocery stores could be carrying Staphylococcus aureus, also known as Staph, a bacteria that can make people very sick. Now, it's important to stress that this is an estimate by the Translational Genomics Research Institute in Arizona, based on 136 samples of beef, chicken, pork, and turkey from grocery stores all over the country. But the study showed that half of the random samples contained the bacteria, with half of those samples laced with a strain of the bacteria that is resistant to some antibiotics. Well, that is the bad news, and it does seem bad. It's also important to note that proper cooking of the meat kills these germs. And federal health officials estimate that staph accounts for less than 3% of all foodborne illnesses. So maybe you don't need to throw out the 10 pounds of ground meat you bought for your next barbecue. But definitely be careful on how you cook it. The debate over school lunches has raged on for a while, targeting pizza, fat content, and salt. And the fight has now fallen squarely on the shoulders of chocolate milk. That little carton of brown moo juice is being ripped apart in what has become a civil war in our school systems. Some say that kids won't drink any milk if they can't have flavored. Others say that if the option is taken away, our children will adapt. Well, we're here to make sense of everything. Sort of like a lactose Gandhi. Let's look at the facts. Flavored milk, while well, still milk, is not the nutritional equivalent of the original stuff. It's significantly higher in calories, sugar, sodium, and contains artificial colors and flavors, many of which are coming under fire for their link to ADHD. Does that sound like something nutritious you'd want your child having five times a week? Also, the general resistance is that any milk is better than no milk, but it turns out that children will most likely drink the original as well. It just might take some time. If you remove it from the schools, of course in the short term children will not want the healthier version. Sugar tastes awesome! But it's important to look past the short term. At preschools in Connecticut, it is almost universally common to serve only low-fat unflavored milk. and. Surprise, the children drink it. If you give them one option long enough, eventually they'll get used to it. If your child decides on water for lunch every day, you can decide what kind of milk he or she will have when they get home. It's as simple as that. So instead of arguing about how our next generation is going to get their nutrients from milk, start thinking about what you can do at home to keep our school systems a healthier place. Who knows, it might just save your child from the obesity epidemic in America. That's it for this edition of Insiders Health TV. I'm your host, Kimberly Walston, and remember, it's your health, we're just helping you think outside the box.